Hello, and welcome back to Friday Devotionals. Yeah, this is uh, this is becoming one of my favorite things to do here on our YouTube channel. I see there's quite a number of people taking advantage of this online resource, and uh, it really gives me a lot of joy that we get to read Jesus in Red together, talk about the words of Jesus, and uh, hopefully gain some hope out of our readings uh, as we walk through just simply what Jesus said. Today I'm going to be talking to you about <clears throat> the most famous person in history, in all of history. And strangely enough, here in 2024, there seems to be a, a growing number of skeptics that would proclaim the falsehood that Jesus of Nazareth didn't even exist. <laughs> that blows my mind. I, I, I can't believe that uh, it seems to be the, the last retort of Jesus is, well, yeah, he didn't exist, and so none of those things didn't happen. Oh, oh my word. I, I can't believe we have fallen so far uh, disregarding mounds of archaeological and historical documentation over the person of Jesus. At the very least, one should be able to see the fact that Jesus of Nazareth is a very real person. And all the things that come along with the Christian faith, we, well, we read into, we study, we take a look at eyewitness accounts and r recorded documents am amongst generations of early Christians. And, and we draw our own conclusions about where our faith lies. But this this latest retort of, oh yeah, he just didn't exist. Oh, that, as a pastor, that just blows me away. I cannot believe we're in an age now where the the last ditch effort to dismiss the personhood of Jesus is to just simply say he's he's never existed. I want to talk to you about that today, about how Jesus is to this day the most famous individual who has ever lived, and then it's up to us to take a look at his deity and come to our own conclusions about who he is and what he offers for the life we live. Take a look here at Luke chapter 10, verse 22. All things has, have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. Hmm. Taking a look at the aside here in Jesus in Red. Jesus of Nazareth is one of the most famous people in history. No one compares to him. In fact, he claims the title as the most famous person to have ever lived. Hundreds of millions call him Lord and pray to him daily. He is even esteemed by millions who don't call him Lord. They merely see him as a religious teacher or great prophet. Comparatively few, however, know that he is the creator. This is because flesh and blood doesn't reveal his true identity. That revelation, that discovery, comes directly from God. The Gospel of John begins by telling us all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Hmm. That's John chapter 1, verse 3. Jesus is the Christ, the chosen one. This is a truth, Jesus told Peter, and one we could only know if the Father revealed it to us. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father did, who is in heaven. There's one thing to say, I know the person of Jesus. But there's a totally different story that says, I believe in who Jesus is. In a world today that is becoming oh so quick to not even admit that he's even existed. 
oh, that's, we're just creating a whole nother hurdle to jump over before we get to, well, the most important thing, trusting in who he is as fully God and fully man, as the redeemer and perfecter of our faith, as the one who provides everlasting life for all those who believe in him. As somebody we can put our trust in, our, our cares in, our anxieties in him. The redeemer of all things. That's a big enough hurdle to jump over. And now we're talking about living in a world that is quick to even dismiss that he existed. The world wants to do a very good job at dismissing the one true God. It's something that the Bible talks about all the time. How this opposition we live in is continuously trying to push people further and further away from the truth. That God is real and he has sent his son to redeem the world and he will come back again one day to set all things right. This excuse of, well, he just didn't exist is the latest ploy, is the latest trick in the book to try to usher people away from the faith. Unfortunately, for some, it works. They're quick to dive in to what they read as a flashy article on the internet and not do their own research. That is quickly debunked by old census data, by archaeological finds, by documentation of generations living in the times of Jesus saying that, hey, Jesus of Nazareth was here and he did this and this and this. My heart breaks for those who are struggling with this very first hurdle because there is a big one that follows. Once we say that Jesus has existed, well, that that doesn't get you into heaven. Right? What guarantees our everlasting life is, is faith in him. Faith in everything that he brings to the table. Faith that he is the son of God. He's the most famous person in this world and for the vast majority of that group that know his name, they are all eager to admit, yes, he has existed. He was born in Bethlehem. He lived a life that cured much of a following. And he died on the cross at the hands of Rome. All the way up until they went to his tomb three days later and couldn't find him. That's where we split off. <laughs> For us who have faith, we see that as the sign of the resurrection, the thing that makes Jesus deity, the thing that makes Christ noteworthy, famous beyond all compare, I love the questions that are here. And it's only one. It's very simple. But it's one that each and every one of us has to come to grips with. Do I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Christ says in his quote from our Luke reading today, that if your answer is yes, it's because the Father has made it so in your life to see what is true. I don't know who is pushing you to that conclusion. For many of our watchers, I assume you're already Christians. But I know for some of you, you might be viewing this out of a spirit of curiosity. And I thank you that you found yourself here. Where are you? 
do you see Jesus as a fairy tale? Somebody who's never walked the earth? Well, if that's the case, you're a part of a very, very small group of people who have fallen for the world's next big lie. Because the evidence is clear. He's very real. But, have you gotten over that next hurdle? You say, okay, he's, he's lived his life, and, and I think I'm ready to put my faith in him. Totally, completely. If you're on the fence, if this is something you've been thinking over, struggling with, and you're not really sure where you're going to go next, maybe God put this resource in front of you. To open your eyes to the truth. Christ himself says God the Father is going to orient ourselves in a way in which we might see him. That can happen through a lot of different avenues. It can happen through nature. It can happen through God putting people in your life. Telling you the truth about Jesus. It could be a Bible on the nightstand of a hotel that you're traveling in. And you thumb through it out of curiosity and something speaks to you. It could also be a YouTube channel that simply tells the truth about Jesus. If you are somebody today that is on the fence and you're ready to make that commitment to who Christ is, we would love to hear from you. I would love to be able to talk to you and to communicate with you well over what this faith means for the rest of your life and how you might be a good witness to who Christ is. This is the biggest decision you will ever make. And you don't have to do it alone. There's comments on our YouTube channel for a reason. We would love to hear about your faith journey. Whether you're far along the road in your path with Jesus, or you're making that choice for the first time. Truly, truly committing your life to the God of all creation. To Jesus who wishes to heal you and redeem you and grant you purpose and meaning in this life and life everlasting for what's to come. As Christians, that is our greatest pleasure, our greatest joy, seeing new individuals who's, who God has opened the eyes to see him well. We'd love to be a part of that journey with you. So, Feel free to always reach out, whether it be through Facebook, our YouTube channel here, and we'd love to walk this road with you. If you yourself or you know somebody who might benefit from the scripture reading today, feel free to share this video. Urge friends, family, neighbors, and strangers alike that this, this is the greatest choice one could ever make in their life and make the case for Christ well. I want to pray, goodness gracious, I want to pray with you <laughs> and for you as God prepares you for today. Oh my God, I thank you for this resource of, of YouTube where we might be able to reach people that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to reach. I thank you for your word and the truth that comes forth from it. I thank you for the person of Jesus who always speaks truth and lets us know who is the author of our faith, who is the God who opens up our eyes, the creator of all things. We thank you, Lord, for the fullness of who you are, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, guiding us and shaping us each and every day to do a little bit better today than what we were yesterday. Oh, Lord, I pray for those who are on the fence ready to make that commitment to Christ Jesus, that you might grant them peace and confidence to know that this choice changes their lives forever. And Lord, if it be within your pleasing and perfect will, I pray that we here at TCW are a small part of their faith journey. I pray this in your son's precious name. Amen. Peace be with you.